all right guys what's up um just got a package in the mail today i want to do an unboxing this is my new backpack that i'll be using this year to wrap up shed season and go into scouting and then hunting season so let's break into it and kind of do an unboxing and break down the pack and why i'm choosing to use an exo pack so i've been using these guys for about six years now this one here is the 4800 bag on the k3 frame initial look this thing is clean they're such a simple lightweight pack like maybe just a couple pounds in all as it sits uh i love them i found that the 4800 is the best pack for an all-around like two to three day trip or day trip a couple accessories laid out here and we will dive into each one first thing we can kind of talk about is the sizing with these packs so that you can go off of a smaller frame depending on your height uh, or a larger frame i think the cutoff is at 5 9 or 5 10 to go to the larger one so i opted for the smaller one since i'm right there just under the uh, line as for the hip belt i have a 30 inch waist so i went with the smaller one too for the sizing they have all of that on the website a chart to uh, go off of i will say this if you're right in that middle range for the hip belt um in that gray area go for the larger one uh, my dad he's also has one of these packs he's right in that gray area he went with the small and it's just a touch small for him so if you are right in that gray area you probably want to bump up to the larger size uh, but for me the small fits perfectly so what you're going to get with this setup is a lid which is detachable you can see right there in the uh, top you can clip and unattach the lid i like the lid though it's nice for um, basic storage quickly that lid can come off and you're going to have one you're going to have one compartment for small things here and then it also opens up to a larger compartment in this larger compartment you know that's where i keep my knife maybe some fire starter equipment anything like that that is where this little guy i like to have this mesh bag one or two of them that's where this is going to clip in and i put my tag or other little things like that inside of there and uh, it attaches right there in that corner by that loop uh, if you see me in shed videos you'll notice that where the lid clips on up here i like to put my thirds through those and that keeps antlers pretty pretty tight to your uh, backpack so i i do like shed hunting with the lid while we're on the subject of accessories i picked myself up a side pouch that goes on your hip belt right here i typically keep mine on my uh, left side just because if i do carry my pistol while i'm out on, a, on the mountain i'll keep it on my right side so usually i'll just have one pouch and that just goes through right there your waist belt will feed through that and that's a good little pouch you could put snacks a radio anything like that inside here maybe even your cell phone if it's small enough it's about a seven inch six inch wide uh, pouch good handy little guy another accessory i picked up thought this would be good um even though i don't have a bow right now in the moment <laughs> is a little bow protector cam protector so when your bow strapped on this will go on and attach at the bottom here and you could slip your cam in there and protect that while you're hiking into whatever spot to hunt for the day getting into the pack there's this small zipper to access this long compartment it's about as wide as your hand is about a six inch compartment soup and then it's the full length of the pack a little bit stretchy material on this outside so you can wedge a good amount inside of there what's different about this pack from my old one uh, i've noticed they have amped up and created better loops to pull on those are less fragile they're a little more heavy duty now the pack now has a full horseshoe size zipper to access the main compartment of the bag which i do think i like other packs i've had on the k i believe the k2s it's just one zipper each way but this one has a full 
zipper so this completely opens up and you can access the main part of the bag once inside there's another little mesh compartment up here about hand size for whatever you need the pack is super versatile on the sides you have um what opens up to an external pouch that's very stretchy i'll usually put big water bottles in on that side uh, if i don't carry a bladder then you also have on both sides of the pack a compartment that is the full length which is good for tripods and spotting scopes um, weapons trekking poles anything of length that you want to have good cover that that doesn't fully enclose but it does tighten with this little string here you can pull that cinch it tight so it's secure in there and then you have your buckles which will attach to the attach to there to cinch down nice and tight looking at the top of the bag that clip will open up and that is where the pack will expand kind of show you the full length that's where you fully get the majority of your space is right there opening that pack up and with the 4800 i've made it three to five days uh it's pretty full if you're pushing over three days but um i do have the 6400 which i could flip out keep the same frame and just exchange back and forth but overall most of my days are just one to three days 4800 is plenty of space underneath your lid at the top of your pack this is your water bladder pouch unzip that you could slide your bladder in uh most any size bladder fits i run a 100 ounce water bladder fits just fine comes out right here and then you can put that through any of these straps kind of the biggest thing uh with these packs that a lot of people might take a little getting used to is where you haul meat or accessing like that back part of the pack what you're going to do to get to your meat compartment or get that bag off super heavy velcro and once you've undone those three your bag will detach and will look something like this so now i just have my frame with two additional straps with good solid length to them they're rolled up now which you can strap meat to. I've done that before uh, with my bowl this year and numerous animals that I've packed out. And that's where you can really cinch down and load up your meat. And then when you're ready, you bring your bag back over the top of the meat, Velcro it back on. And then these straps that come off of the frame come to your bag portion, clip it, and now your frame and your bag are pinching that meat together and keeping it nice and secure. I really like that feature because all that weight is up against your back and it's not hanging off the outside of the backpack. You don't have to worry about that. It's sucked in tight to your back and that's what's gonna let the pack ride the best, let it, let it um, haul the most weight efficiently. So again, backpack is detached. You can loosen the bottom up right here to get the bag away from your pack even more and then cinch it back down put your meat in these clips here will you can undo they're rolled up here but they will expand to get around whatever meat you need it says right here do not reattach the bag lips um, if you have a load that is true you can overstress it if you are trying to get that velcro wrapped around if you have a solid load if it's a small amount you can easily get those straps around but if you are loaded up with a lot of weight and the meat is pushed out, you know, a significant amount, just rely on the straps to keep the bag and the frame together. Don't worry so much about wrapping the, the Velcro, which is on this side, back around. If you're a shed hunter and you want some extra straps, these are actually pretty nice to detach before going into anything. Put your bag back together and now because they, these have quite a bit of length to them, you can actually have four straps. You have your main two straps from the bag, and then you also have these two straps from the frame that you can wrap around antlers. So you'll have two up top, two on the bottom to really snug those antlers down tight to your backpack. Now I've kind of demolished and tore this thing apart. I'm gonna piece it back together, show you how it sits on my body.
Okay, got it. Put together, got my hip belt, got the little bag inside the lid. Throw it on, show you the fit. Small fits me perfect. Like I said, I'm a 29, 30 inch waist. So I got a pretty tight waist. Uh, fits good, still room to go up or down for me with a small on the waistband. So far it fits pretty nice. You can adjust with Velcro um, how the uh, how it fits on your back, up or down, and you can micro adjust with that to get the perfect fit. But just going off of out of the box, fits really nice. Um, I love how compact it is to my back for suspension. You've got these guys right here, easy to pull to cinch down that way, across the chest. Everything is easy to maneuver, tighten. It's very simple. Loosening is simple. Um, it's a great pack. I love the fit. I love everything about it. That's why I've used, this will be now my third one. My dad's had two. I've had the K2, the K3, and uh, this is the K3 as well. Just a couple upgrades since I had my last one. And between shed hunting and hiking for two years, I beat the heck out of that. Um, and so it's nice to just get a fresh start with this one. Can't wait to get it dirty. So definitely check them out, guys. XO Mountain Gear. They are a great investment. Your pack is can really make your hunt miserable if it doesn't fit good. And if you're constantly battling something with it, these guys have uh, their science pretty well dialed. And uh, their gear their gear is definitely top notch. They take good pride in it. So I respect that. And uh, with that, I'm going to keep running their pack. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions uh, that you don't feel like I answered in the video, feel free to message me on Instagram, Martin underscore Chag, or comment on the video, and I'll be happy to answer any questions there.